Must have been cold there in my shadow To never have the sunlight on your face You've been content to let me shine That's your way you always walked a step behind. Hello, family, and welcome. We're Bob and Penny Lord, and we are so excited to share with you the life of Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati. We're coming to you from Turin, Torino, Italy, his, his birthplace. In fact, we're standing in front of the house where he was born, lived his entire life, died and he from this house he left to be buried in the church of La Crocetta which we will visit later. When we look at this magnificent there's nothing else to call it but a palace in this home our Lord as he did with many of the saints he chose to take this boy from this opulent mansion and give him a heart for the poor, for the disadvantaged, for the people who felt they had no hope. He gave them hope. He took from his very essence. It, Pope, it, Pope John Paul II, when he beatified him, he called him the man of the Beatitudes. He's a powerful, powerful role model of our day. Today, we are in such problems because people are telling us that our young people's minds are being destroyed by all the outside influences. They thank us for our television programs on Super Saints because they have role models that they can give to the young people. This young man, is, a, is he is the patron or co-patron of the Italian youth. His body was brought to the Sydney World Youth Day this year. He is a very strong, strong symbol for our young people. The Lord brought him to us what was it, 1901? 1901 is uh, when, he was, when born. he was born. Pier, Pier Giorgio's family was not really a very religious family. His father was a powerful, powerful man in the government. He was the publisher of a liberal newspaper, La Stampa. He became the youngest ambassador to Germany from Italy. So he was very much into the political and social world. His mother was an artist. She sold one of her paintings to uh, Victoria Emanuel. So her thinking was not focused on church either. She was interested in many other things, the least of which were the church. But her, grand, her mother, Pia Giorgio's grandmother, Linda, was the one who gave him his spirituality. She was the one who taught him all the things he came to love in our church. Uh, talking about his relationship with his mother, she loved him very dearly, as did his father but they did not understand the walk that he was taking. He couldn't even share it with them. So they termed uh, his tardiness at times with a lack of regard for the family. And it wasn't. What it was, was that rather than spend the money on a fare to get home, he saved that money for the poor and walked. Oh, ran. He actually, he would run home so that he wouldn't be too late for dinner. But then by the time he got home, he was soaking wet from perspiration, so he'd run up to his bedroom to change into a clean shirt. And when he came down completely out of breath, they would say, he has no regard for being on time. He just doesn't care about his family. And really, he did. He loved them dearly. Yes, and would do nothing to disobey them. His dear father uh, had plans for him as don't we have plans for our children? He had a very successful newspaper that he founded, and he wanted Pier Giorgio to take over. But Pier Giorgio had a different idea. He would evangelize in a different way. And so, uh, but toward the end, because he knew that this was so much in his father's heart, and he would do nothing to disappoint him. He agreed that yes, he would go and work in the newspaper. And before he died, the 
the desk was already had sitting. his seat ready for him at the newspaper, but the Lord had other plans for Pier Giorgio. We're going to go to the church of La Crocetta now, the church where he was baptized and where his funeral mass was held. This was a very important church to him. He could see the tower from his bedroom window up here. And he would look over the church, and whenever he could, he would run to the church and serve as an altar boy if, it was, if, if he was allowed to. This was a very special part of his life. We want to share that with you. And as he said, and as you will discover more and more, that the Eucharist, the heart of Jesus, was his heart. We're here in front of a plaque commemorating the life of that soldier of Christ, as they called him, soldier of Christ, Pope John Paul, our beloved Pope, said he was a man of the Beatitudes. Now, Pope John Paul II had a great devotion to Pier Giorgio uh, long before he became Pope. And he came up to Torino and then up to Bologna to venerate and pray before the tomb of Pier Giorgio. He had a great devotion to him. He really believed that this young man was a, um, a role model for the youth of the world. It began, actually, for John Paul, beloved John Paul, and Pier Giorgio, right in Krakow, when he was a professor. Was, did Pier Giorgio give him the strength and the courage to withstand all the horror that was happening in Poland? We believe so. So he brought him and the memory of him with him right to the papacy and then declared him blessed. How did uh, blessed Pierre Giorgio, how was he able to do all that he did in his short time on, life, on earth? The Eucharist, mm. daily communion. The Rosary, he belonged to the confraternity of the Rosary. He belonged to the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. He was a third order Dominican. He just embraced everything that had to do with church. Pierre Giorgio said to the youth of Polona in 1923, Jesus comes to me every morning in Holy Communion. I repay him in my very small way by visiting the poor. With all the strength of my soul, I urge you young people to approach the communion table as often as you can. Feed on this bread of the angels, whence you will draw all the energy you need to fight interior struggles. Because true happiness, dear friends, does not consist in the pleasures of the world or in earthly things, but in peace of conscience, which we only have if we are pure in heart and mind. God bless you. smile to hide the pain Did you ever know that you're my hero And everything I wish I could be This rock is from the mountain where he used to go. And it's fitting that it should be the protection of the Blessed Sacrament, which is the center, was the center of his home. Pio Giorgio had in his notes six o'clock at the Consolata Basilica. This refers to the place and time when he would begin his nightly pilgrimage to the poor. Now, he never considered his father's wealth his own. Rather, he broke the unspoken rule of never being in debt as he borrowed lira from those who would loan the money to him. You could see him standing under the clock at La Consolata holding his impromptu meetings with the needy, giving those in need his last lira. It became well known as his meeting place. 
and always it was the same for the poor. Speaking about the poor, he said he saw a special light surrounding the poor and unfortunate, a light we did not possess. He explained to an associate when trying to explain his love and ardent desire to help those who were in dire need and were not able to help themselves. There were times when he borrowed a little from his father and his mother. He kept a strict accounting of all that he borrowed. From the time he was a little boy, Pier Giorgio would work in the garden helping the gardener. One day, as he was picking wild flowers to bring to his grandmother, he saw a lay worker approaching the garden. She explained she was picking a bouquet to place on the altar in the chapel. Little Pier Giorgio walked over to the woman with a rose in his tiny hand and called out to her, Sister. She insisted, I am not a sister. But Pierre Giorgio insisted, Sister, take this rose to Jesus for me. The lay worker saw the look in the child's eyes, and she said something which would become a prophecy. You'll see that one day Jesus will make you a saint. We are so excited. We are here in Polone, Italy, in the room that was set up uh, where Pierre Giorgio died. And we're with his niece, Wanda Gavronska. 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 Who is yes. the daughter of uh, Luciana, his sister Luciana. Who wrote the, the two wonderful the books. Two books. And actually, she and the family are the ones that are most responsible for fostering the uh, cause for the beatification of Pier Giorgio, plus Pope John Paul II. Like Pope John Paul II, he was an outdoorsman par excellence. He loved mountain climbing, hiking of all kinds, riding his father's horse, skiing. He loved to share his faith with his companions, his heart speaking even more eloquently than his words. He was all parents could want in a son. The sad thing was that they did not know him the way his friends did, the ones who lined up to accompany him on his last trip. Everyone who knew him loved him. He was a real young man in the purest sense. He loved to play practical jokes on his friends, and then he loved to share his love for the Eucharist and his faith with them. Because of his enthusiasm and joy, they hung spellbound on his every word. He formed a group which he named Tipiloski, or in English, Shady Characters. They not only prayed together, they had fun, which sometimes turned into playful mischief. They loved to be with him, and he loved to be with them. The rosary was his lifeline. No matter how tired he was before retiring, he knelt by the side of his bed and prayed the rosary. I want Wanda to share some of the insights that she's been giving us off camera. Now we have to get her on camera because she has a wealth of information about about Pier Giorgio and his mother and and the entire cause for the beatification. Yes. Uh, I think we want to dwell on on his life. There would be uh, so much to say. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But so important, so important. Uh, when I was speaking to Wanda yesterday, last night. Uh, I spoke about our deep interest in Pier Giorgio, the need that we have, not only in our country, but in the world, for a model. For the and, youth. And he is. He's exceptional. Model. Yes, exceptional. There's yes. no, no other one like this. Yes, exceptional, yes. and exceptional, yes, exceptional. touchable. He's touchable. If you would dare to dream, he is touchable. The things that he did, were extraordinary in an ordinary way. Pierre Giorgio was always a spiritual young man. He got that from his grandmother, his grandmother, Linda. Linda, Linda, Linda. But when he and his sister did very poorly in Latin, they had, he had to go to a Jesuit school. They sent him to a Jesuit school. Mom and dad, their mom. Which dad. for him was the greatest gift you could have <laughs> given him because he learned about the Bible. He was able to receive communion every day and this was just a great gift for him and i believe that he believed that receiving our lord gave him 
the desire, the love that he had for the poor. And so uh, we're here. You know, it, it's so awesome to be able to be with a relative, someone from this strong line of soldiers of Christ, really. <laughs> Now, uh, Wanda, uh, this room, as we see it here, uh, was in... This, had, this is the room of um, uh, Pier Giorgio that was in Turin, but uh, the house, unfortunately, did not belong to us. And um, when Pier Giorgio's father died, we brought it uh, here to, to Polone. It's exactly all the furniture and everything exactly as it was in, um, in Turin, except as I say, except the thing that people but can kneel on the at the table for saying mass. And that's a bed on which uh, he died. Now, an interesting so, but very sad thing was that during his last week, which is, he died of polio, uh, and it struck him immediately, swiftly, and deadly within a week. He was, he was gone, and during that week, his grandmother was dying. Was dying of old age. And the problem was that the family was so engrossed and grieving over the coming death of the grandmother, and, they, and she was in the same house in this, uh, down yes. the hall, that nobody really knew that Pierre Giorgio was, was suffering as badly as he was. And part of that was his fault, too, because he was always very considerate, very loving of his family, very respectful, and he loved his grandmother. And he was grieving for the loss of his grandmother as well, and very sympathetical with his mother and what this was costing her. So uh, he, he really, I don't believe he really let on to everyone how terribly ill he was. Oh, no, no nobody, nobody realized. Yeah, and yeah. Then, then nobody, nobody even thought of it. Pierre Giorgio was so healthy, so mm -hmm. strong. You know, they gave him something for flu and, and uh, just, just uh, keep quiet. And now it's a moment that we're, we're yeah. just taking care of, of grandmother. No, nobody realized till, till the day, till the day, the, the funeral of the, the day before his death, really, when, when uh, his mother decided she was so tired with, uh, with uh, the dying of her oh, own yeah. mother, with everything, she decided not to come to Polone because uh, the mother was going to be buried in Polone. So she said, uh, she said, I stay with my son. Mm -hmm. And uh, there she, she wanted to lay down on the bed next to him, mm -hmm. no, to rest mm -hmm. for a moment. Pedro said, no, don't, because you can catch it, you know. Mm -hmm. And oh. then there she realized how terribly sick he was. Yes. And she telephoned immediately to Polonis and come back, and she called the doctor, but yeah. it's too late. Uh, you know, um, in, in uh, Luciana's book, yes. she says uh, that that time was so special yes. because it gave her an opportunity to be close to her son. His sister Luciana wrote, his body was placed in a shroud while news went throughout the entire city of his death, which traveled as if on the wings of his fame, had given rise to incredible anguish and weeping. The boy, whom we thought was unknown to all but his family, suddenly found amidst the most desperate dwellings his very own friends, the, those whom he had assisted or those he had merely passed near, leaving the unforgettable memory of his spirituality. The things that were begun to be said about Pierre Giorgio by unknown friends and all the strangers who turned to us constituted a revelation so imposing and so sublime that it, it overwhelmed us. Contrary to the opinion and desire of my family and only after long discussions, his friends, the youth group, were given permission to carry the, the uh, coffin on their shoulders to the parish church of La Crochette. And the street, it was nine in the morning, could hardly contain the thousands of persons who had come from every part of the city, summoned only by the memory of his spirit, to the many who had already taken turns in the room of our house, wishing to mingle with our tears, their tears with ours. There were so many that in order to make room for the funeral procession, they couldn't go the direct route to the church, but had to go through larger streets, the, through Marco Polo Way and this other concourse, 
in order to compensate for all the people that were there for the funeral of Pier Giorgio. Pope John Paul II always had a great devotion to Pier Giorgio Frasati. As early as 1980, he began to use him as a role model. In April of 1980, to the youth of Turin, he said, Pier Giorgio was a young man of overflowing joy that swept everything along with it, a joy that also overcame so many difficulties in his life because the period of youth is always a period of tremendous strength. In March of 1983, at the inauguration of the San Lorenzo International Youth Center, he said, it is good that you have placed the famous cross of San Damiano in this church. Together with the memory of St. Francis, I want to recall to you as an incentive for striving towards high ideals, the figure of a young man who lived in our era, Pier Giorgio Frassati. And then in Rome in April of 1984, in the presence of 80,000 young people at the Olymp Olympic Stadium, he said, I feel that the church, no less than your homelands, can count on you. You have models to inspire you. I am thinking, for example, of Pier Giorgio Frassati, who was a modern young man, open to the values of sport. He was a skillful mountaineer and skier, but at the same time, he bore a courageous witness of generosity and Christian faith and character towards others, especially the very poor and the suffering. And at the Marian Shrine of Europa on July 16th, 1989, he said, to those of you who are devoted to Mary, especially young people like Pier Giorgio Frassati, who used to come up here to give himself to prayer, the Blessed Virgin proposes to be a shelter and a refuge. Dear young people who are listening to me, like Pier Giorgio, may you also discover the way of the shrine in order to undertake a spiritual journey, which under Mary's guidance brings you closer to Christ. Less than a year later, at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, on May 20th, 1990, Pope John Paul II beatified, beatified Pier Giorgio Frassati. In his homily, he said, certainly at a superficial glance, Frassati's lifestyle, that of a modern young man who was full of life, does not present anything out of the ordinary. This, however, is the originality of his virtue, which invites us to reflect upon it and impels us to imitate it. By his example, he proclaimed that a life lived in Christ's spirit, the spirit of the Beatitudes, is blessed and that only the person who becomes a man or woman of the Beatitudes can succeed in communicating love and peace to others. He repeats that it is really worth giving up everything to serve the Lord. He testifies that holiness is possible for everyone, and that only the revolution of charity can enkindle the hope of a better future in the hearts of people. He left this world rather young, but he made a mark upon our entire century and not only on our century. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Family, we've just finished walking through the life of Beato, blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati. And we're here, we have the privilege of having his body here laid in state for everyone to visit. We are up on the mountain in Europa, and this was a place he used to walk up to this mountain from his summer home in Polone. We drove up, and I think maybe it was easier to walk than it was to drive. At any rate, it's a shrine to Our Lady. It's a beautiful, beautiful shrine to Our Lady. And after the World Youth Day in July, his body was brought from Australia to here, to, to uh, Europa so that he could be here with his people until the beginning of the fall, probably middle of September, he will go back to Torino and, the, and be in the Cathedral of St. John. But this is the only place where you can actually see the coffin as you were able to see it at the World Youth Day in Sydney. And so we have videotaped that so we can show it to you as part of this program. Someone one at once asked us, why now? Why haven't we known about miracles of the Eucharist all these years? Why haven't we known about Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati all these years? Why now? And we said, because the world needs the miracles of the Eucharist now, and the world needs the story of Blessed Pier Giorgio. The, the world needs 
to see him and to look into the mirror because this could be you. Listen with your heart to what blessed Pier Giorgio has to say. There is joy in chastity. There is joy in embracing the church. There's joy in the rosary, devotion to Our Lady. There's joy in helping the poor. He was called the man of the Beatitudes. One of his greatest works was to help the poor through the Vincent de Paul Society. And even without the Vincent de Paul Society, on his own, he did many, many things. We're living in a dark world, a world that tells us that good is bad and bad is good. And here comes a light on the, on the feast day, on the uh, vigil of Holy Saturday, he was born. Even that the Lord planned that this light would come when the lights went on inside the churches all over the world. Joy Pierre Giorgio has a lot to say to you. Learn about Pier Giorgio Frassati. Embrace the things that he embraced. It's fun to be good. It's fun to be pure. It's fun to be church. He's touchable. That's the most important thing. He's not beyond your reach. He's as close to you as your heart is. Listen to him. And then don't say a big yes. Don't say a yes to the top of that mountain. Say a yes to the foothills, and then the Lord will bring you higher and higher toward him. And make Pier Giorgio's slogan, your slogan, verso l'alto, always upward. He was always upward, going closer and closer to heaven. We love you. God bless you.